Okay, so here it is. So, hi. These are molds for PDMS uh, microfluidic chips with channels of different sizes and heights. So, we're supposed to pour silicone and let it cure to obtain microfluidic chips then cover with glass and we can see how well the material flows inside we can see here that the smallest channel didn't print out because it was a 50 micron thin channel and 50 microns represent on this printer one row of pixels because it's with a projector so when it's only one row of pixels the light is too weak to cure the material in time the next channel is 100 microns and why the 100 microns printed out because this represents two rows of pixels and in between the two pixels light overlaps and then it becomes strong enough to cure the material again this is sub G material resin from maker juice labs mixed with graphite dust and this is without graphite we can see here that the channels are missing it's one two three channels so the one the 50 micron channel 100 micron channel and 150 micron channel why did this happen well I suspect that the curing time was too short the exposure from the projector light was too short and it didn't give enough time to the material to start to polymerize and here we can see that it's missing two channels the 50 micron channel and the 100 micron channel because I thought this one here had too much curing time and I decided to try with less curing time and I went with half the time which represents one second and a half and it was not enough time to let the material cure in the 100 micron channel as it did in this one with three seconds of exposure per layer we can see that the 100 micron channel did come out the last one this was one second exposure for both here they did come out very good but the channels are not good now the scratches you see on the on all of them they are the same scratches this comes from the acrylic in the vat because it's acrylic and it's very easy to scratch every time you wash it it scratches so we need to find another material to make the vat um, 
like glass, but it needs to be UV transparent. So borosilicate glass is a very good choice. So the vat where we put the, the liquid the resin is made of acrylic and it's very easy to scratch when you wash it. Now, when you have scratches, they scatter the light and what you see here is not a physical scratch but it's missing light, it's shadow in fact that didn't cure that material so the solution for this would be just as we put pigments in the material to make it uh, less transparent mm, then we can make the surface of the vat not transparent but still translucent to mimic pigment in the material and still be able to print with clear material and have the possibility to control depth of cure we all know that if we have horizontal cavities inside our models with clear material the light going through this material will cure the light in the holes and the holes will block with cure material but when you have opaque material the solid material will prevent shadows and if you have a inner cavity that's horizontal that's supposed to stay liquid because you need a hole then the pigment will stop the light from curing that liquid material in the hole so this is why we need to put pigments to control depth of cure but with a non-transparent and translucent bottom of the vat let's say a coating with something white and translucent that makes the surface super hydrophobic and super oleophobic would be something perfect I tried uh, coating the vat with uh, Teflon but uh, Teflon stay, it doesn't really dry it becomes um, waxy and it doesn't work with some resins that are oil based it comes off from the glass and it doesn't work so I want to try something with um, a coating with let's say uh, ever dry it's a product that um, you spray on something and it makes that surface very very super hydrophobic and super oleophobic so this is it for now